Hello, welcome to the Accounting Superstar Channel, the place to learn accounting. I'm Professor Don Bush. I've been teaching accounting for about 30 years and been a CPA for about that long, and I've got great ways to explain it. So let's get started. In prior videos, we studied accounting for income taxes, temporary differences. Temporary differences give rise to deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. So what's an example of a deferred tax liability? A deferred tax liability, that's when you get a tax deduction now, but the IRS catches up with you in the end. So that's why it's a liability. Deferred tax assets, that's where you pay your taxes up front, more or less and you pay less taxes later on so it's a deferred tax asset but today we're talking about permanent differences and permanent differences we don't have any of the problems with deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities it's really quite easy now one of the keys to learning about permanent differences is to more or less memorize what some of the permanent differences are so you'll recognize them so here are some very common permanent differences the federal government encourages people and corporations to invest in state and local bonds and the reason why is the the federal government feels well if people invest in state and local governments and buy their bonds then the federal government won't have to assist so much so the federal government is very happy to see people investing in state and local bonds and at uh, and up to this point the federal government has not taxed uh, interest earned on state and local bonds which is really great now state and local governments that's a different story they may tax you on those earnings but the federal government doesn't do that not yet anyways so item number two proceeds from life insurance carried on key employees well when uh, a key employee like the president of a corporation uh, dies uh, the company will receive life insurance money and this is to help protect the company and give the company uh, time uh, to find a new uh, president and so the government has always felt that well if your CEO dies your company might be in a bad situation so we're not going to tax life insurance proceeds which is related to number three the premiums paid for life insurance carried on key employees is not deductible it's not an expense for taxes and so uh, the government feels hey well if we're not going to uh, tax the proceeds from life insurance when a key employee dies well we're not going to allow a deduction for the premiums and I guess that's fair enough so number four fines and other expenses related to a law violation so maybe uh, a person driving a company truck gets a speeding ticket well that's not deductible for uh, taxes all right because the government doesn't want to encourage people to break the law and, and give people a tax break however uh, it might be expensed on the income statement so number five number five here 70 to 80 percent dividend deduction received this comes into play when a company has subsidiaries and, and receives dividends from subsidiaries. And the government, depending on the amount of ownership, will give a deduction of 70 to 80 percent of the dividend received. And that, uh, as you probably already know, um, dividends are, are more or less subject to double taxation. And so uh, the government is trying to avoid triple taxation here. That is the example for today, the 70 to 80 percent dividend deduction received. So here's what's going on. Off to the left hand side I've got two charts and the top chart is are the generally accepted accounting principles and the bottom chart is the IRS regulations, the tax code. Uh, in other words, filling out your tax form. Generally accepted accounting principles, these are the rules that we follow to produce financial statements. So here's what we have going. It, we have revenue includes $20,000 dividend from a subsidiary. So here we are, 120 grand total, 20,000 of that is a dividend from a subsidiary. Expenses are 75,000 for this company. And the pre-tax financial income is 45,000. That is simply 120 minus 75 is 45. Now here's the part where you gotta watch. 
Again, these are generally accepted accounting principles, not tax laws here at this point. So the income tax expense, now I've got here, the rate is 20%. And if you take 45,000 and multiply it by 20%, you will not get $5,800. So what's going on here? In fact, I have a note right over here. 45,000 times 20% does not equal $5,800. Why is that? Well, here's the reason why. We have to go down to the tax form. So here's the tax form, more or less. Revenue, 120000 And that's the same revenue up above. And that includes the $20,000 dividend from the subsidiary. Now, tax deductions, look at this, 91000 but the expenses, according to GAAP, were 75000 What's the difference here? What's going on? Well, according to the tax regulations, this company is going to get an 80% dividend deduction. Now, the dividends received were twenty grand, and 80% of twenty grand is 16000 Let me say that again. The company received $20,000 in dividends from a subsidiary, and the company is going to take advantage of the 80% dividend deduction. 80% of $20,000 is $16,000. So um, the company is going to get an extra $16,000 of deductions on its tax form. So here's what's going on. The expenses were $75,000, assuming all those are tax deductible. Add another 16, you get 91. 75,000 plus 16 is 91,000, which brings down the taxable income to 29,000. Now check this out, the pre-tax financial income here is 45,000, but the taxable income according to the tax return is 29,000. Now if you take 29,000 and multiply it by 20%, because the tax rate is 20%, you will get $5,800. And all we're doing is taking this $5,800 and putting it right up here, $5,800. So they're, they're one and the same. So what is going on here, folks, to say it all another way, is that we are not going to multiply 45,000 times 20% to get the amount of tax because we are never ever going to have to pay that much tax. This, that's why they call it a permanent difference. However, uh, according to the tax form, we do have to pay $5,800. So that will be our income tax expense. It will not change. The government will not try to catch up with us in the end. And um, as far as I know, they're not planning on changing the, the rules on this uh, anytime soon. Now, coming down the page here just a little bit, this is kind of a throwback to those deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. The income tax expense that we're going to have according to our GAAP financial statements will be $5,800. The income tax payable according to the tax form, the tax code is $5,800. So there's no difference and there shouldn't be. There, there's no deferred tax asset. There's no deferred tax liability. Don't have to worry about that. The journal entry is super, super easy. The income tax expense, $5,800, that's going on the income statement according to GAAP. And income taxes payable, $5,800, that's going on the balance sheet, current liabilities, and that will be a generally accepted accounting principle balance sheet. So folks, that's the end of the story. That's all there is to it. There is no more. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. That way I know that these videos are helping you out. Otherwise, it's hard to tell. And also, YouTube will know that you're being helped by this and YouTube will uh, let you and other people see more of these videos. So help the channel out. And until then, over and out.